So we do have some yellow leaves again. This gets watered, but apparently now it is too hot and the yellow leaves are back. So this is water or temperature related. So there's not much I can do but observe and I'm afraid of drowning them. So I stick to the schedule and the schedule is every third day for quite a while. There are some sprinklers in there and the ones in the back, yeah, those there, they have um, tiny little sprinklers that provide water directly to the tree. Well, so be it. And here this gets uh, irrigated manually. That is the place where it got chopped down and there is some sun hemp growing up again. They are still tiny, can't, can't really see them from afar. And here is something that I wanted to show you. Oh, and by the way, these beans here, they are ready for harvest. But as tomorrow we have to do the health check, um, this has to wait a little bit. I opened a few and they are definitely ready. That is also why the plant is now shutting down. So in here, you can see, for example, this one, which is now reaching to be over the height of the surrounding plant. So that's very good. This one is still there tucked away, but the leaves are very big. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with the growth of this tree. Two days back, the dogs <laughs> toppled over this tree. It was pretty big. So let me show you if I can get in there somehow. Yeah, so you probably can now see this despite the shade. So this was big, but then you see that the stem is already woody. So this will make new leaves. And I show you an example how this looks like. This is also now very big and getting on top. That sunflower has now opened up. And by the way, you see this is wet down there. There is this hose and it has a uh, thing on top that closes it. This is to maybe in the future install um, a, an outlet. And that helps these to grow like they normally would. Because there's kind of a drip irrigation 24 hours. Because you can't do this everywhere. So here is the one. Let me walk around and show you that. So this one got damaged by the dogs passing through here. And within a few days it has grown these leaves. And basically it's catching up. So this is not a big problem. So eventually these trees will all grow. The only one that we apparently really have lost is that one in here. But I think I mentioned that before when I showed you this earlier. Um, we will put another one here or maybe just leave it empty because they also very closely spaced. So what else can I show you here? Um, ah, this is interesting. So let me take you over there. And by the way, you see that a lot of wheat is growing up. Yeah, it's growing despite the fact that there's no irrigation, no rain. So that stuff knows to deal with the situations, the situation that we have here. And our water is still there, so this never dries. This is definitely our water level. So the thing that I wanted to show you, um, here we have a patch around that old oak tree. And you see we have some flowers here. And also this is growing very, very well, despite the fact that there's no immediate water source. Well, there is actually, because I see a little bit of dripping there. So there's a small leak that feeds the waterer in the dock enclosure. But I cannot believe that 
these few drops are responsible for all that. And after all, you see here on the other side, there is also quite a lush patch. So somehow there is moisture and the tree certainly does participate in this. Um, you can see that the tree was chopped. Back then there were no laws prohibiting people from um, laying their hand on these oak trees. Today there is a very stiff fine. I think it is 50,000 euros if you chop down one of these oak trees without a permit. And they don't give you the permit if you just wanted to chop it down. So if the tree is thick then you get a permit and else you are not supposed to do anything to it. Pruning is okay. Officially you would have to ask for a permit for pruning these oak trees too. So you can only do this at a certain point of time during the year. But this being Spain, a lot of things are written that are not actually enforced or verified. But those are the rules. You see two sprinklers, the one to the right is inactive. This will be repurposed. And the other one has now an extension. So that it throws a little bit wider. And on top, um, there was a conversation in the comments about the sprinklers. So those are those garden sprinklers. You can buy them in many shops here locally. By locally, I mean in the Valle de los Pedroches and mostly in the city of Pozo Blanco. About 20,000 people live there. These are not the ones that are really for agriculture. Despite the fact that we buy them in a store that does a little bit of agriculture stuff. So these stands, they also sell them. And I will um, go to the city of Cordoba and see what I can find there because this rainbird equipment looks to me a lot more interesting and you can see this part here is pretty dry and the plants there are kind of dying because that sprinkler does not throw all the way to here. So that's an issue and of course we could have more sprinklers here, so sure, certainly. But we don't have that much and there's also the pressure thing. So I think there is a way to do this better with more specialized equipment. Um, you can't ask anyone around here. This is not an area where people do agriculture. You will not find a market garden or something like that. So people have a little bit uh, what they call huerto in Spanish. So a little vegetable garden, kitchen garden, behind the house and that's it. There are no fields. This is dehesa, this means this is a forest and you are supposed to do ranching here. And in the past, um, like the book that I have, there were dehesas larger than and smaller than 1000 hectares, no fences and people were herding the animals on foot or on horse back when people were willing to do this. Now this is different and therefore we are in between everything and we have to figure out our own way. And keep also in mind this is not for production so this is not um, a channel where we talk about a working farm providing food to the people around. We have no customers that eat what we provide them. This does not work in this way. I wish it would. I'm always envy, uh, envious when I see people um, delivering food to their customers. I am watching myself a channel Edge of Nowhere Farm or so they are called in Arizona. A working farm selling food and the customers come to them and all this. So this is very lovely. But this culture here is not like that. So therefore, 
we have to do things in a completely different way. Like I said, I wish it were different. But it is like it is. And my motivation is to get this place green and build up something in an organic way. I'm not talking about organic farming. What I mean is let it grow and develop customers based on what we have. And there's also this other piece. So let me weave this in here. So you cannot go to someone and say, hey, I'm planning to do that and that, and in the future I'm going to have that many of this. Um, the answer will always be, call me back when you have it. So we did this in the past. I had some conversations with people about eggs and the person was very interested and uh, was asking how many eggs are we planning to produce and very well we had a face-to-face -face meeting and in the end it was okay once you have that many eggs it's not that much but uh, I am willing to buy call me when you have the eggs and then I'm going to buy them so and there is no contract, <laughs> there is no commitment, there is nothing. So it basically, it means produce a ton of eggs, have a lot of hens, feed them, and then maybe someone will buy them, or not. <laughs> and then you throw the eggs away, or you feed them to the pigs. So this is not a very good situation to be in, and I don't like um, to be the idiot. <laughs> at the short end of a stick so therefore I am doing things that have some value to me and I'm not trying to work with a market that does not exist like it would elsewhere so to all the good meaning commenters um, thank you for all the suggestions and ideas but our situation, unfortunately, is a different one. In a different place, in a different country of Europe, I would certainly agree with all of you. But here, we have to do what suits ourselves and what improves the soil so that this place in green. And then we come back to this idea of direct sales, but probably not to the people here in this immediate area. So we can then probably offer some specialty food that is worth shipping all across Europe like we have done with the ham before. That experiment, as tiny as it was, was successful, so it works. But to those um, who bought the ham, I'm very sorry that the shipping has been such a hassle, which is the other issue. So. Um, let me um, tell that story in short. We have tried different shipping companies and the best part is DHL Express. They are a pretty good company, um, but the driver for DHL Express decided on her own, no, I'm not going to drive my truck out there. I want to pick this up somewhere in the city where it's convenient and I don't lose that much time, says an employee. The head office for the area in Valencia called this person several times, made her understand that she is supposed to go to the customer side and pick up the merchandise and still she did not because her immediate boss in Cordoba had a different idea and so eventually the package got handed over in Pozo Blanco in front of the home of Angel to get it shipped with two weeks of delay. So this is not how you can do business. And the other company that uh, represents GLS um, is a similar sad story. So they confuse countries, so instead of shipping something to Switzerland they believe it has to go to Australia because there is something that reminds them of a place in Australia, whatever. And so there are a lot of returns and a lot of uh, yeah, issues. 
and then the latest is everything was provided and then suddenly it says we cannot find the customer the phone number were wrong the phone number was not wrong but they always misunderstand the national prefixes in Europe Spain is plus three four other, country, other countries have a different prefix Germany is plus four nine and they believe that these prefixes are not needed so they try to shorten this to a nine digit number because in Spain phone numbers have nine digits and they assume that in all countries they have nine numbers so I'm whining and I'm renting but this is the sad state of affair why nothing here is really easy so sorry for that but some background info why I'm not willing to repeat certain things from the past and as you can see here this tree in an irrigated area but at the edge is in a sad state so this needs some special treatment but right now I don't have the water that I can provide it so tomorrow this will get an extra dose of water everything else there is lush as you can see and I'm um, speaking about so this is the okra and in the last uh, video I said something I'm a lazy gardener so my idea is to cut where needed so that the okra stays on top so probably these tall grasses I should cut but this is two days from now when I have an opportunity it is really hot and I'm eager to get inside now so this is working out but it needs a little bit of maintenance so that the okra is definitely staying on top there are so many okras um, a few small ones I don't care if they don't make it but most will make it and after all this is not for sale and I have never cooked or eaten okra so there's definitely a lot to experiment with so I hear from over there that this drip line is still working but it's mostly air it's because the sun is now very to the side of the soda panels for that pump so there will be no more irrigation from this water source so closing shot before I end this video here this is the mix of sun hemp and friends as you can see it's a lot more sun hemp on purpose and the area very close to the sprinkler looks very nice all the way to there and what is beyond gets irrigated by hose from the other side it gets a few drops but it's not enough so we definitely have to install more sprinklers and that's going to happen on Wednesday when we are past the health check with the bovines tomorrow and we can use the sprinklers that we have been using in A7 so I hope you have a new picture now here from the compound with a lot of additional explanations and again sorry for the renting but I think you should know that there are a few things way beyond our control and things are different cultures in this world are very different and not everybody has the same goals in life so see you next time then